Welcome back, everybody. The final stop in looking at Maslow's hierarchy of needs and how that translates into workplace engagement in a healthy workplace is at the top of the pyramid. That top spot Maslow originally identified as something called self-actualization. And I know that's a mouthful of language and it takes a little while to kind of get your arms around that, but in a nutshell, it's when somebody believes that they're on the right path when they are, uh, you know, their skills and their competencies and their core values are in alignment to what they're doing, or they're on the right path in believing uh, that's what they're doing. Now, from an organizational perspective, we have a couple of ways that we can attack that. One of them is a traditional method that a lot of folks use with some kind of varying degrees of success, and that is to go after career management. You know, literally sitting down with your team members and talking about, so what do you want to do? Where do you think you fit? What do we need to do to path you to get there? And traditionally, again, that's had kind of some success and some failures because a lot of organizations run out of the steam to follow that all the way through the end. It's not enough to just sit down and map that out. A good organization not only maps that out, but follows that through the lifespan uh, with some continuous coaching, some opportunities, some job shadowing, uh, some job trading that goes along with that that helps facilitate that. Now, the approach I'd like you to think about there is a little bit less traditional that isn't focused about what somebody's job title currently is, but more about the skills and the things that they bring to the table. You know, far too often organizations hire folks that are based on experiences and, you know, do they kind of fit with this? Do they meet the job classification? And then we kind of pigeonhole them in a particular job function. What I'd encourage you to think about is what are the real core skills. I mean, do you have somebody that's creative, that, you know, you see doodling and drawing it in meetings, and we have them kind of pigeonholed in a customer contact kind of environment. Let's sit down with our team members and find out what their talents are. Are they good in front of people? Are they good with customers? Are they good at diffusing difficult situations? And one of the ways that you can do a really outstanding job of self-actualization and encouraging your team to hit that level of motivation is by matching their talents with, you know, opportunities and sometimes crafting opportunities that are based on their talent. And not trying to jam a round peg into a square hole, but looking at where they're talented and building something that matches those talents and contributes to the organization's success and their own self-actualization. The other strategy I'd like you to think about related to self-actualization is allowing our team members something meaningful outside of the working environment to, uh, to work at and to be involved with. Uh, great, and we've seen this in play now with a couple of organizations with, with outstanding success, is allowing your team members the opportunity to volunteer and to do meaningful work inside their community. Now, there's one little asterisk on that that I want you to really kind of focus on. Is that the organization's desired charity flavor, or is that something that's really driven by team members that they can get their arms around? Do we allow team members to do different things that aren't necessarily company-sponsored ones when it comes to volunteerism and, and uh, contributions of their times and their talents? The uh, model that we've seen that works best is kind of allowing team members to drive that, and I'll scare some of you, the daylights out of some of you, the best model, the best practice that we've seen is actually allowing team members one day per period of time, whether that's a month or a quarter, where they can serve in a volunteer capacity. And when they're able to, when team members are able to contribute something outside the working environment that has value to their community, to their organization, to their church, and it's something that resonates with them. You know, maybe it's the American Cancer Society because cancer took a family member of theirs. Maybe it's the Humane Society because they have a real, real strong uh, affiliation with uh, animals and uh, that kind of cause. But whatever it is, when it resonates and connects with them and they can drive it, there's a lot more value in that self-actualization. When we're together again, we're going to talk about more engagement strategies and healthy workplace strategies. But for this time, we are done looking at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon.